Hi, I'm Dr. Birish. In this video, I'll be presenting a laparoscopic management of delayed post-operative pelvic hematoma. This patient underwent a total laparoscopic hysterectomy three weeks prior and was on prolonged anticoagulant with low molecular weight heparin. She presented not with hemorrhagic symptoms but with a constellation of symptoms of pelvic pressure such as difficulty for maturation, defecation and an occasional spiking of temperature probably due to early sepsis. There was no significant drop in hemoglobin, slight rise in blood counts and her vitals was very much stable. Initial imaging with ultrasound showed a pelvic hematoma and further subjecting her to CT with a contrast confirmed a pelvic hematoma of size 11 into 7 into 8 cm with a volume of about 400 mm and probably an active vessel in the right pelvic wall. While she was hemodynamically stable, the decision for laparoscopic intervention was made to relieve her of symptoms, address a potential source of sepsis and ultimately hasten her recovery. On laparoscopic entry, omental and intestinal flimsy adhesions were noted. Careful adhesiolysis is performed to enter the pelvis. We encountered the hematoma which was a firm organized clot and which was adherent to a surrounding structure such as the rectum, bladder and the pelvic side walls. Meticulous blunt dissection along with suctioning was required to mobilize and clear the clot. Note the flimsy layer of adhesions on the pelvic surface. While there was no active pulsatile bleeding which could be recognized, the risk of provoking significant hemorrhage during evacuation is high because of the fragile nature of the tissues and the inflammation and edema induced by the hematoma. So that needs a gentle handling of the tissue in such conditions. We performed a meticulous survey of the vaginal cuff, all the pedicles, the bladder flap and the pelvic side walls. Despite exhaustive irrigation and suctioning, no active arterial pulsation or point source bleeding could be identified. Giving the clinical picture that a small vessel could have retracted deep into the parametrial tissue. A bleeder once bled and failed to show up is the one which can bleed later also. And hope is not a strategy for managing in such condition. So as the saying goes, when you cannot find the source of the storm, you must sometimes pray to calm the sea itself. So our strategy was to go proximal to achieve hemostasis. So we made the decision to proceed with prophylactic control of the anterior division of internal iliac artery. This will reduce the pulse pressure to the entire pelvic side walls and allow any fragile vessel to get thrombosed. We begin at the pelvic brim on the right side by the medial or the endometriotic approach, tenting the peritoneum and giving a small nick on it, we made an entry into the retroperitoneal space. The key landmarks that needs to be identified are the common iliac artery, the bifurcation of the common into external into and the internal and the ureter. Using careful blunt and uh, sharp dissection, we are developing the retroperitoneal space medially to the external iliac artery. We gently elevate 
the overlying peritoneum and areolar tissue to expose the ureter. See there you can see the peristalsis of the ureter. So the ureter is gently reflected laterally to protect it. Please mind that till now, till we identified the ureter, there was no use of energy source that was done to prevent injury to any of the vital structures. The bifurcation of the anterior and the posterior division is what we intend to dissect in further few strokes. See how the blunt suction is being used to just dissect the division of internal iliac heart. So there you can see that the bifurcation of the anterior and the posterior division is very much clear. You can see that the posterior division is dipping down that's probably a small uh, vessel which is supplying the lateral pelvic wall structures which was coagulated and there you can see that's the anterior division of the internal iliac artery that is what we intended to clip and you can see the posterior division directly dipping down into the pelvis so dissecting the ureter further you can see the crossing over of the ureter from the lateral aspect towards the medial aspect. So there we have created a sufficient space in and around the anterior division of internal leg. So that's the posterior division which is dipping directly down and confirming that the anterior division is sufficiently dissected so as to apply a clip. So identifying the lab landmarks once again. There uh, we come with a hemolock. So in these uh, critical uh, spaces and with altered anatomy, it's not wise to use an energy source to seal off the vessel. So hence we decided to clip the anterior division uh, of the internal iliac with a hemolock clip. There you can see it's completely clipped and the ureters can be identified very much. In dealing with a vascular anatomy, precision is the difference between a control and a catastrophe. So every moment should be meticulous and precisely deliberated and every landmark is identified and secured. Now we are trying to isolate the infant lobe pelvic ligament and the landmark here against the ureter. C ureter is being safeguarded uh, with the, the left instrument and that the right infant lobe pelvic ligament was sealed. So now we are proceeding on the left side. Now in the on the left side we are attempting to uh, expose the the internal iliac by the lateral approach or what is called the oncological approach. We are just dissecting the retroperitoneal by going lateral to the infant lobe pelvic ligament. There you can see the ureters uh, which is very much clear with gen gentle traction and with sharp dissection the ureters are visualized and possibly identified. There, with gentle uh, dissection on the lateral pelvic wall, we are trying to dissect the an internal iliac uh, trunk. So there, the internal iliac trunk has been identified, and we can see the first transverse branch, which is traversing the retroperitoneal structure, retroperitoneal space and dividing that retropatent space arbitrarily into uh, pararectal and paravascular is the uterine artery. And there you can see the torturous uh, uterine vessel and you can see above the ureters. So as uh, we did not 
uh, find any active uh, bleeding nor the CT angiogram showed any active lesion on the left side here we we decided to just clip the uterine artery rather than uh, the complete anterior division of the internal iliac trunk now we are isolating the infant low pelvic ligament on the left side identifying the ureter and uh, displacing the ureters further laterally so as to prevent any possible inadvertent uh, thermal injury so the ureters are sufficiently safeguarded by the left in left hand uh, grasper and the ip ligament was sealed so and again the base of the bladder which is a potential uh, space where cervical vesicle uh, vessels can potentially bleed is again checked for and then there you can see a small gap or in the vaginal wall uh, this occurred because we initially tried attempting to evacuate by transvaginal route uh, because the clot was old and organized we could not uh, evacuate completely and also the CT had shown that there was a possible active lesion on the right pelvic wall so we wanted to explore that it that also so then we decided so that's how there is a small rent in the vault so the vault uh, rent was closed with uh, number one vitry we also reviewed the video clip of the first surgery that is of the total laparoscopic hysterectomy all the pedicles were bone dry at the end of the procedure so retrospectively analyzing the possible uh, bleeding could be due to a long term low molecular weight heparin which uh, was continued post operatively so this patient uh, did uh, very well post operatively and this completes the surgery thank you